What's up everyone, it's Kadi with Money Investing. In this video, we are going to be talking about SoFi, Neo, Palantir, and Tesla. You guys seem to love these types of updates, quick technical updates with some macro kind of sprinkle in there as well. So as always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful. The only thing I ask in return is that you drop a like and of course, subscribe to the channel if you are just joining us. For the first time, link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. Do me a favor, check that out. It's the first week of the month. You get access to all the Binance alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, intrinsic value spreadsheets, members only private videos, trading view charts, and the list goes on and on. There's a lot of ton of benefits if you want to join our money vesting community. So link's going to be down below. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first things first, Neo reported their delivery numbers, which we are going to break down. So they actually came out on the 1st of August, and uh, they basically delivered over 20,000 462 vehicles in the month of July, which was an increase. Actually, I think this is a, uh, yeah, so in the month of July, this was actually an increase of over 100% on a year over year basis. And deliveries consisted of 14,066 premium smart electric SUVs, 6,396 premium smart electric sedans, and cumulative deliveries for NEO reached over 364,000. Again, that's a record for the company. So over 100% increase, yet the stock price was down on the day and of course sofi also coming out with uh of course earnings yesterday they were rallying quite aggressively but of course on the day down a little bit over 9.6 percent after a downgrade on the stock which we'll come back to in a minute but talking first about neo uh we have already seen a very substantial rally so as i pointed out in one of my other videos on neo going over the fact that once a stock price rallies the way it does like this for NEO and for any other stock for that matter, it gets to a point where the move to the upside becomes a little bit more unsustainable, right? So RSI, MACD, incredibly overbought, it stretched to the upside. So expecting another 10, 20, 30, 40% move to the upside can be a little bit unrealistic without actually seeing a pullback first. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing at the moment for NEO. So it's starting to come down a little bit now back under 15 bucks. This right here is going to be a very strong support for NEO, in my opinion, sitting roughly at 1375. So we actually did get a very nice breakout on Friday, last Friday on July 28th. Uh, then, of course, it rallied a little bit more, uh, you know, yesterday. Today, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. Once again, so support level is going to stay put down with 1375. 1380 for NEO, just taking a little bit of a breather, right? Just a small dip, small pullback, a little breather, and then of course making its move back higher to that resistance at close to $17. That's my target. That's my next target and that next resistance that I'm watching for NEO. We obviously did see a very nice breakout from that falling wedge pattern for NEO. And this right here is the overall downtrending channel of lower highs and lower lows. So consistently just selling off so like i said that next resistance and of course that target's going to be 17 dollars. but the way to get there is going to require a little bit of patience and i wouldn't be surprised to see that pullback see that dip sort of accelerate a little bit further getting down to 1375 close to 1350 and then making that move back higher once again just really overbought at the moment so it's a it is part of those market cycles so talking about sofi so sofi obviously reported some very strong numbers but as i have said before on SoFi, what does Wall Street care about? What is that one thing? What is that one metric that Wall Street cares about the most when it comes to every company? <clears throat> and that's earnings. Earnings, earnings, earnings. Just rem remember that for life, Wall Street cares more about earnings than anything else when it comes to individual companies. And SoFi, as great company as it is, right? A fantastic growth in the overall revenues. I mean, profit, I mean, in terms of products and of course, customers. Uh, lending business growing, refinancing business expected to expand once again, net interest margin also moving in the right direction. What is that one thing that SoFi lacks? Profitability. And that's that's part of the reasons why, you know, Wall Street is always looking forward. And SoFi says it expects to be profitable in terms of gap net income in the 2023 fourth quarter. And analysts and investors are focused on the path to profitability and what the fintech's growth will look like going forward. And that's really where the main sort of concerns come in. That's where the main sort of analysis comes in because if you if you don't have a profitable business you don't have a long-term business okay if you have a profitable business you can have a long-term sustainable business right that's just the nature of everything and you know I've, I've kind of made this example with the twitter right twitter is a cash burning machine it is not a profitable business it doesn't have positive free cash flow the only reason it is able to exist is because it's got the backing of one of the richest people in the world, Elon Musk. 
Same thing with WhatsApp. WhatsApp in a standalone business will most likely never be profitable. If you just spin WhatsApp out to a business of its own, it's not profitable. But the reason why it's able to exist is because it's got the backing of a much bigger conglomerate meta platforms. And of course, Mark Zuckerberg, which advertising in itself is very profitable. It's a core business that meta basically runs. So that is very important to Wall Street. That is very important to me too, because you know I wanna look for companies that are gonna be around for a long time, right? And if they are profitable, they can reinvest that capital back into the business, keep growing, hire more people, generate more free cash flow, generate more earnings, things like that. So investors um, did downgrade shares to underperform for market perform, but raised their price target, which is always weird, to 750 from 550 in a Monday report. And that's probably one of the reasons why the stock is obviously selling off a little bit, but I did do a video on SoFi going over into a lot of detail over their earnings, their their net interest margin, and their balance sheet, going over the different contribution mix when it comes to their lending business. Uh, but of course, giving back on most of those gains, coming back down to 1035. I did put together a new fair value on SoFi yesterday, which is closer to eight to nine bucks. So I would be very excited to actually dollar cost average a little bit more uh, for SoFi. So this right here is really gonna be that level to pay attention to um, for this company. And of course, first intermediate support is gonna be at $10. So this right here is gonna be a very, very important level to watch for, for SoFi. Of course, in case we get a bit of a breakdown below this level, the next support is gonna be 865, where we would be breaking down below that 21 EMA as well. Not to mention the overbought RSI and MACD are also showing signs of some weakness and some more potential downside here from the company. And of course, on a weekly time frame, we are very, very overbought with the RSI, about as overbought as it's ever been at over 73 on a weekly time frame. And of course, MACD also overstretched. And this week does not look good. This is a little bit of a inverted hammer candle, might even be a dragonfly, where you've got lots of sellers stepping in to bring us right back down. And this usually does happen towards the end of a trend, signifying a little bit of a reversal as well. So just be cautious, be careful. Support levels at 10 bucks, all the way down to 865. And of course, we'll continue to monitor how the company's business and the fundamentals improve over time. Talking about Palantir now, and Palantir on the day up over 76 basis points, continues to rally higher now almost at $20 per share. So it has definitely seen a lot of momentum, uh, a lot of breakouts here. So again, validation from that 21 EMA pushing higher. So we'll go ahead and turn these levels back into a support uh, for the company. The next target, 2650. That's going to be that next resistance. That's going to be that next target to watch for Palantir, it continues to make a move higher. And again, you can see that it's a slow and steady process, right? It, it pushed up, then saw a pullback of about 20%, then rallied again, then saw a dip of another 8, 15, 16%, and then rallied once again. So that is the constant process of moving higher. Um, hold on one second, let me just change that color. Uh, pushing higher and then pulling back, pushing higher, pulling back, and then of course rallying further. So that's the, you know, we need to pull back a little bit for that next leg up. And that's exactly, in my opinion, what's going to happen with, um, which is potentially going to take place with NEO as we see a bit of a pullback here in the near term. So Palantir, like I said, 2650 is gonna be that next resistance and Palantir has already achieved profitability, right? That's the difference between NEO SoFi and Palantir and Tesla. Tesla is in a whole different league of its own, but Palantir, that's the difference. It's already achieved profitability. That's where a lot of the excitement's coming from and uh, the potential more upside is also coming from. So talking last about Tesla, and Tesla we've already gone over multiple times. Right now it's just in this symmetrical triangle where it's just consolidating sideways. So if we do see a little bit of a pullback, uh, a breakdown below the symmetrical triangle, then this next support really is gonna be 242. So this right here is gonna be that level to watch. And of course, resistance all the way up to as much as 275 for Tesla as well. So right now we're seeing a lot of consolidation. A lot of trading sideways, um, 275 back resistance. Support level is going to stay put down to 240, $241 per share. Again, margin compression is a little bit of an issue in the short term. Again, going back to that drawing board, going back to the basics, what does Wall Street care about? Profitability, right? If margins compress, that means profitability is struggling. And that's one of the reasons why Tesla also sold off after the earnings, after the margins compression. Uh, and of course, right now it hasn't really been recovered from those levels. Volume has been kind of trailing behind as well. So it's been declining a little bit. Um, so if you do see a breakdown, I think I could see it down to 240s uh, for Tesla. But resistance is going to stay put at 275. You guys already know where my fair values are on a lot of these companies. Neo, sub 10, of course, Palantir. Um, I think it was like can't remember, but it was closer to $12, $13. I may have to double check, but so far, closer to eight, nine bucks and Tesla closer, closer to 150s as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like and uh, again, subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord Patreon is gonna be down below. First week of the month, best time to join. 
again, link's going to be down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.